Pentagon under this president than any previous president. More expansion of war powers because his predecessor was not held accountable. And he has not been held accountable. Uh, you know, we, we've, we've made this the norm. And greater hostility and greater antagonization of Russia and greater risk of nuclear apocalypse we'll now than when, any time uh, before. In a few minutes. Thank you. Yeah. Cindy's turn. So, <laughs> I'm sorry, I just saw someone raising their hand, David. Um, so, we are running out of time. I can't believe we've already been talking for, for quite a while now. But we are going to have plenty of time for Q&A. So, um, if you think of something while we're talking, go ahead. So there, there's a couple more questions, and, and maybe you can answer this one that I'm going to ask you. What's not going to take that long, and then we'll get to the final question. But David and I, um, we obviously know each other quite well. <laughs> we know where we stand on these issues and everything. Um, the thing is, once people know about the lies, we've talked about, they say we never should have gone into, for example, Iraq. But they never go, this, rarely go the step further and say, well, then we got it. We have to end it now. We have to bring the troops home now. If they never should have been there, then they shouldn't stay there one more day. But then also, um, there's such a thing, there's, you know, neoconservative, neoconservatism. There's, um, you know, war profiteering. There's um, imperialism. But there's also a, such a thing as, liberal imperialism, humanitarian war. And I had Dennis Kucinich on Cindy Sheehan's soapbox. By the way, when you sign the paper, I hope you think it's okay if you're not already on my list to get on Cindy Sheehan's soapbox list. I had Dennis Kucinich on when Obama and the US, and you know, Hillary didn't do this by herself. You know, Clinton didn't do this by herself. She didn't uh, decide to bomb Libya. Just, she didn't just wake up one morning with a migraine and say, bomb the crap out of Libya. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> there's like a whole, she has like this whole background of people and she wasn't even the president. So, um, so anyway, now this, that was a humanitarian war. That's what they said. And Dennis Kucinich came on he said, humanitarian war is an oxymoron. And so he was reputing <laughs> I'm so out of it. I'm a, I'm a hot mess. But uh, my sister is suffering from cancer and I'm her main caregiver so I rarely get out to do these events anymore. So I'm really happy to be here. But um, so he refuted, that's what I'm trying to say, everything that the Obama administration and like Samantha Powers and people like that were saying, we have to destroy Libya to save it. <laughs> and so the liberal imperialists will say things like, it, the war was not fought smartly. So if, if there's generals coming out after they retire saying, droning is counterproductive. What is productive? What is a productive war? And what is a war that is fought smartly? I think most of us here would say that the, it's an oxymoron. They don't exist. In, in recent weeks, having opposed all war sort of simplistically and entirely, I have come in recent weeks to support one kind of warrior. And that is the Golden State Warriors. <laughs> Other than, that, I, I completely agree. There is no good war. There is no humanitarian war. There is no philanthropic war. Uh, you know, the, the, the thing about when they market a war, they use several different types of lies usually at once. So you had the people like Ed Schultz on the good liberal media just spitting mad, outraged about crimes that Gaddafi had supposedly committed decades earlier that Ed Schultz had lost not a minute of sleep, I am sure, for decades over these crimes that he, you know, on cue, he's now outraged and screaming for blood, and, you know, and wants Gaddafi and anybody with him slaughtered, you know. But then you have another section of the population that needs it to be a, a rescue of civilians in need, 
uh, humanitarian operation uh, to go and save civilians and then maybe follow through by punishing the wrongdoers and overthrowing another government and throwing the whole nation into chaos and proliferating weapons around the region and destroying, you know, North Africa. But it has to start out as something humanitarian. So you have people who are really good commentators, usually on the bad wars, like Chris Hedges, saying, let's go into Libya and, you know, drop some bombs and save people. And you have, you know, and you have the, uh, you know, the liberal peace groups thinking they're being strategic and appealing to the general public saying, let's not waste all the money bombing Libya, let's have schools and things at home for good Americans. And you have, you know, the, uh, you have the humanitarian warriors saying, no, you're racist and selfish, we must bomb Libyans because we care about them, you know. And they go to the United Nations and they get an authorization to rescue Libyans who are threatened, who were not threatened. It was a lie. They were not threatened. There was no massacre of civilians about to happen. Nobody had been given Viagra so they could rape more women. You know, it was a lie. It was lies. But they got that authorization to go protect those people. So what did they immediately do? They went and bombed the capital, overthrew the government, armed people on the ground who sodomized the president with a knife and killed him, and went on TV and said, we came, we saw, he died, and giggled about it. Right? The, the UN authorization did not authorize that. So the pretense of legality based on these loopholes in the UN charter for wars that shouldn't be there and aren't there in the Colombian Pact, you know, allows people to sort of pretend it's kind of legal. And they say, well, we can't sit by when a tragedy we've invented is about to happen. We must act. An act, as you know, means buy stuff, vote, or bomb somebody. These are the ways you can act as an American. Uh, and and so be because we don't want another Rwanda, right? Rwanda, where they did everything wrong for years, quite intentionally, to create the disaster and then expanded it into a much larger disaster that nobody knows or cares about in the Congo. But where bombing never would have done anybody any good, right? But because it's the one humanitarian war that didn't happen, so it's not, you know, on the record as a catastrophe. We must bomb Libya because Rwanda. And then you get to Syria, and Samantha Power writes an article saying, do not look at Libya. You have a civic duty not to pay any attention to Libya, so you're properly willing to bomb Syria because Rwanda. You know, it's not let's bomb Syria because Libya. Don't look at Libya, that's a disaster. But because, because the one that didn't happen, that was going to be so good. Bomb Syria. So, you know, this, there's never been a war that benefited humanity. There's never been a war that built a nation. There's never been a war that eliminated evil. There's never been a war uh, that, that, that fought off an aggressive attack on the United States uh, in, you know, in defense of the homeland. Uh, and, and so you have to look at these, these types of lies and say, we've been here before. We've seen this before. We're not going to wait 30 years or, or three months this time. We're going to say no right now, even if you don't ask us. Right? It's because they asked us in 2013 and made it a public question, war or not. And they asked us on the Iran nuclear agreement, this or war. Well, then the public gets it right. But when they don't ask you, they just start bombing the hell out of Yemen and boosting Al-Qaeda, which by the way, John Brennan says Al-Qaeda was methodically eliminated, it's gone, you'll be pleased to hear. Uh, you know, they, they just go and start bombing Yemen and you find out about it from foreign news sources and they say, oh, well, that's okay because it's a drone war, that's better than other wars. Yeah, but we didn't have another war. And you do this long enough, we are going to. And now we do. And now we have a ground war. Now we have five ground wars out of those seven wars that nobody can name. Uh, and all primed to be escalated. Right? So we, we have to be able to say no, even when they don't ask us. We have to use the, the Community Alliance paper or dance radio show or any way we can to communicate to each other what in the world is happening and give the right answer even though they didn't ask the question. That's the new ability we've got to find. Okay, so I have one final question and then we'll take, question, well, we'll take uh, questions. I know we're, we ran over time because nobody told me what time it was. But I can see a clock, so it's not really your fault. <laughs> That's why I actually can see the clock right there. Um, yeah, because Bush. So, um, David, we get asked all the time, so we agree with you, but now what can we do? And David has a list of things that he 
you put together. I gave like just a minor input because his was so thorough. And then in the in the question and answer part, you guys might have ideas too. So yeah. So because I spoke to like three or four people before, you know, coming here from among you, and each one of them said, "What can we do?" We all know how horrible the world is, but what can we do about it? And we're always asked that, right? Yeah, that's yeah. a, that's a yeah. good question and a good common question. question, but I started scribbling down things you can do, and I think we could add more, but this is more than we'll have time for me to read through. But, uh, you know, the first thing we can do is drop the incredible obsession with elections. As the late, great Howard Zinn said, it matters much less who's sitting in the White House than who is doing the sit-ins about what's happening in the White House. As the late, great Emma Goldman said, if voting ever changed anything, they would ban it. Uh, <laughs> as well, Gene Sharp, true, and as Gene Sharp uh, put down in an endless list of 1001 tactics, there are numerous things you can do. The nonviolent tools are endless. Right? So when you, when you sign up with Cindy's group and my group and Peace Fresno on that clipboard, you are going to get uh, occasional emails telling you things you can do. And if you go to worldbeyondwar.org, you can check boxes for how you want to be involved, what types of, of activities you like to do. Um, but we have on that website books, videos, PowerPoints, guides to doing presentations, ways to do discussion groups, how to put on events, how to take events to young people in schools, how to try to uh, move the school boards to reform the history books, which are incredibly dishonest about recent wars. But when you get back to like the American Revolution, and there's not a fact in there at all, you know. Uh, make make media, make independent media. Uh, the, the local outlets that I mentioned and others. This is the most important thing you can do, it, as well as sending the letters, making the calls, submitting the op eds to the to the other media. Um, but you know, education is, is absolutely central and takes countless forms. Uh, do cultural exchanges with people abroad. Ask me how you can get on a conference call or a Skype call with young people in Afghanistan. How you can get students here connected with students in Iran. Get to know the people in the targeted nations that didn't make the list of 175 where the troops are watching the basketball game. Get build those relationships. Um, the uh, job I have with some organizations like RootsAction.org is online activism. You know, and people say, well, it's just a petition. We've had petitions that got horrible shows off of NBC. NBC had a, had a reality war rotainment show with, you know, third-rate celebrities and former NATO commanders and generals, you know, playing at the game of war against each other. And in combination with good activists protesting at NBC in the real world, our petition got that off. The Congressional Research Service stopped reporting on weapon sales to foreign nations. Anybody know what nation sells more weapons to foreign nations than any other in the world? Yeah, yeah but we didn't have the Congressional Re Research Service reports anymore. We got them to start it back up again. You know, the, the victories yes, are not every time. You know, we've got Bernie Sanders to improve his foreign policy, you know, one bit, although God knows it's a thousand times better than someone else I can mention. But, but you can go to DIY, which means do it yourself, DIY.rootsaction.org, and start a petition and see all the, all the petitions there that are effective. You can do counter recruitment. You can go, I'll, I'll tell you the organizations if you don't know them, but you can go into the schools and stand next to the military recruiters and tell the truth. You can get the school boards and the state to take the military exams out of the schools that in some school districts they mandate, and they don't tell them it's a military exam. And they feed all that information to the recruiters. Get them out of there, you can do that. You can do local conversion of military industries to peace industries. You can get federal grants to your city to do it. Uh, you, can, you can get the governor not to sign if he hasn't already. This bill to get in to punish any California business that boycotts any nation the United States recognizes. Apparently, even nations that under U.S. law, a weapons company is obliged to boycott, you know. You, you may guess which nation this was created for, um, you know, but, it, but it's written to apply to any nation. Uh, you can, 
You can do, you can make artwork, you can communicate in, in all kinds of ways. You can do demonstrations, you can do protests, you can do disruptions. I certainly advised and helped and prepared a number of people to hopefully disrupt Bernie Sanders in Oakland today. Uh, it, this is what worked for Black Lives Matter. This is what has not been tried for war opposition. For all lives matter, not just U.S. lives. Yeah, it's for, for <laughs> Iraqi lives matter, for Yemeni lives matter. The, the, you know, in, in, a, in a reasonable political system, some candidate once in a while would be asked, do you think a trillion dollars for the single biggest expense of the government that takes up more than half of what the government spends money on or not each year, that is militarism, do you think that's too much, too little, or just right? Nobody's asked. Nobody knows. It's not on the agenda. Uh, so ask Bernie, will you cut the military? Uh, but take your disruptions also to the media. Without the media, go to the physical locations of the corporate media without which we wouldn't have these wars. Uh, mm -hmm. Flood NBC right now with protests over its Dateline NBC reporting. And by the way, they ended the broadcast with another story, which was cutest in the world, little toddlers saying how heroic the US military is and how it protects us from evildoers. And so, you know, it's sort of Memorial Day close to the, to the show. How many nations, by the way, in the world have not yet ratified the Convention on the Rights of the Child. I can count them on one finger. <laughs> and you're sitting there. We're number one. Right. <laughs> one. Under which treaty, which every nation on earth other than this one has signed and, and ratified, if not complied with, you cannot recruit children into the military. You cannot. It's not like they were signing up these toddlers to head off now, but they were, they were recruiting them for the military. Uh, you can go camp in a ditch, ditch by Bush's ranch. Uh, you can stop a bombing attack on Syria in 2013. You can uphold the Iran nuclear agreement. And by the way, both sides put us in a worse place. Because one side said, because of Iran's nuclear weapons program, even though it doesn't exist, we must start a war in Iran. And the other side said, because of Iran's nuclear weapons program, even though it's never existed, we must do this nuclear agreement. You know, so the public comes away with this image of the menacing uh, Iranians, uh, the lying, scheming, violent Iranians that isn't real uh, from both sides of that argument. Um, when the people in Okinawa stop a U.S. military base from getting built, as they just did, we can support them and close all the other ones and ask Carolyn Kennedy and Barack Obama what gives, you know, why we have to do this to the people of Okinawa. When the Catholic Church, after 1,700 years, decides, as it just did, that there cannot be a just war, we can celebrate. We can get the other churches to say it too. We can ask the, the academia why they are now millennia behind the Catholic Church. <laughs> when, <laughs> um, <laughs> when, our, when Italy convicts CIA agents of torturing a man, of kidnapping a man and sending him off to be tortured, or when Argentina, as happened this week, convicts a former dictator and 14 other people of participating in Operation Condor, uh, you know, at the top of which sat Henry Kissinger. We can applaud them and say, what about Henry Kissinger? Uh, we can join a campaign to get the United States to join the International Criminal Court to be subject to the rule of law. We can stop paying our taxes and advertise the fact that we're doing so. We can pursue truth and reconciliation commissions and create them whether they want them or not. Uh, we can pursue local and global strategies that have much more potential than national. Uh, at this point, city resolutions, sister city agreements, uh, global collaborations. We can lobby governments. Lobby governments not to extend the draft, for example, to include women, but to a, a, a selective service for the draft, but to abolish it for everyone. I've got flyers on the, on the table, uh, but, but lobbying the local and, and, and other governments as well. Uh, we can write books, we can travel, just travel, just go to some foreign country and come back and you will work wonders for 